We've just heard from Oscar-winning actor Javier Bardem about a cause that he holds close to his heart. He's highlighting the plight of Western Sahara, a region that's controlled by Morocco, and Bardem says the people have suffered long enough under what he calls an abusive occupation. Now, he couldn't get any Moroccan officials to take part in his documentary, but we have, and we hear Morocco's side. Mohamed Lulishki is the Moroccan ambassador to the United Nations, and we are delighted that you could join us. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. The first thing I have to ask is why on earth would no Moroccan official appear in Javier Bardem's documentary? Well, I think that uh, when Mr. Bardem called the, uh, the ambassador of Morocco to Madrid, I think that he pushed the, the wrong button. You think? I abs no, 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 it's not only that I think, but I'm sure. Because uh, <coughs> judging from the response, uh, uh, it wa he, instead of calling him on his cell phone or the number of the, the embassy in Madrid, he called him on his uh, Moroccan cell. And you know that uh, we right. ambassadors outside, we don't use this, uh, right. uh, the, our, our Moroccan cell, is a I nice think. try. However... No, this is a I'm sure that's true. I'm sure it is. However, he tried many, many, and the producers tried many, many different Moroccans to talk to, and, and many other um, people involved in this from your side. And they say quite clearly that obviously they wanted to get the Moroccan view. I mean, why would you not? So again, why did nobody not just the Moroccan ambassador in Madrid, why did no Moroccan answer their call to at least participate? Have your views put in the program? We have all our views uh, uh, put not only in the United Nations, but on all, all, all over the world. But when you, have, uh, uh, when you have a party that have a definitive position that instead of getting all the elements on which you can base your judgment on a given situation, instead you make first your judgment, and then you, you will try to have the argument uh, sustained. So you think the best offense is just defensive? No, no, it's not defensive. It's a conviction that when the possibility of really having uh, a real dialogue with people that know the, the, the history of the issue, that know what is at stake... Have, you seen, the, the, have you seen the documentary? No, no, I didn't see it. Oh, uh, you, you should see it before you you make statements about it because well, it, they do actually have a huge number of people in it and I'm not making a <coughs> judgment about it I'm simply saying that there are a lot of interviews in there from all sides except from the Moroccan side however we're not going to solve this dispute here what I really want to know is really from your side yes. what about the referendum what about the status and the rights of the people in the Western Sahara uh, we did accept a referendum and we did in, uh, 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 cooperate with the United Nations to implement a referendum between 1991 and 2000. In 2000, the impossibility of getting the electoral uh, body conducted the United Nations to state and to conclude that the referendum is not applicable for obvious reasons. First, when you cannot identify the electoral body, you cannot have a genuine referendum. Secondly, a referendum is not the route when it comes to dealing with these issues. Oh, but you agreed to it. The, the, the Kingdom of Morocco agreed to it, yes. and it's never been implemented. And, and, and look, we can talk about not knowing how many electors there are. We can talk about all sorts of logistics, but in the mm. end, those are details. The real question is, mm. why wasn't this referendum that was agreed by the King, by the parties, by the United Nations, supported by the United States mm -hmm. of America, the President, talked about what a courageous act it was for the King of Morocco, hasn't been implemented. And let me play you then a soundbite, a part of an interview from this documentary, from the person who is heading the organization set up to monitor and implement this referendum. This is what he says about the Moroccans, that actually you didn't want to have the referendum and did everything possible not to have it. Listen to what he says. That's a pretty harsh indictment. What's your response to that? Well, I, I, I think, I guess, uh, I think it was, uh, it was Mr. Frank Rudy, yes, I think. Yes, it was, yes. But if, if you go back to his declarations that he made immediately after leaving the, the minister, so the declaration that he made in the fourth committee, I think you can, you can, you, you can see what his position. I think he, 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 uh, he, he left uh, Layoun with a lot of uh, bitterness and uh, uh, he has a, a fixed idea on how things will be conducted and when things did not... Uh, 
uh, uh, go his way. I think he has taken a certain position hostile to, to Morocco. Here, there was a referendum yeah. decided for this issue. And you have Frank Rudy, who was in charge of the organization for mm. a number of years. Mm. You have John Bolton, who was a very strong I U.S., I U.N. Know. ambassador, I who know. says yeah. that, uh, you know, the Moroccans flooded the Western Sahara. King Hassan determined it would not happen. You know, they signed it, but they never implemented it. So we I guess at this flood, point... Sorry, we did not flood the, 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 the Sahara. Are you saying they're lying? Absolutely. No, no, I, I, I know what I'm talking about. You cannot conduct a referendum with 51% and leave the 49%. It's the, it's the recipe for civil war, and we don't want this to happen. We want a negotiated settlement in which we will apply... We will apply the self-determination. We will negotiate and at the end of the day, we will go to the population and put the result of our negotiation and say, do you accept this outcome? This is what we want to achieve because in our part of the world, we have so many challenges that do not challenge only Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia and the Sahel countries, but also challenge Europe and the United States. Terrorism is gaining ground in this part of, 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 of Africa that is neighboring to Morocco and we want to take all the necessary measures and one of them, one of them is to speed up the negotiations to end the, the, the ordeal of the population in Tindouf because we want to have them back. Ambassador, are you not worried that if this is not dealt with in a just way mm -hmm. that you're going to have people who have no faith anymore in politics that you're going to have young people from the Western Sahara who decide to take up arms, as some of them have said they will. Mm. Is this not simply self-defeating for Morocco? Do you think that we are not sensitive to the humanitarian situation? They are brothers and sisters of me, my wife, and my children. Well, and we want them to come back to contribute to building the new democratic Morocco where all human rights for all will be guaranteed under the you, leadership you talk of about Majesty. human rights, but obviously human rights is not part of the resolution in Minurso, and there are many people who criticize that and don't understand why that would be the case. We have 15 peacekeeping operations in the United Nations. Six of them do not have the human Fine. rights and dimension. And one of them is yours. Is that something to be proud of? No, it's not to be proud of. Okay, let me play the this. The United Nations said... is saying that Morocco has mechanism for protection of human rights well, that are reliable and credible. Well, let me tell you this soundbite, because human rights activists and officials say that it is one of the most oppressive occupations ever, the Moroccan occupation of Western Sahara, with whole-scale human rights violations. Let me play you a part of an interview of a woman from Western Sahara who yes, talks yes. about it. Yes. J'ai été enlevé de chez ma famille à 3h30 du matin et j'ai euh, passé 4 années disparu dans un bal secret, sans jugement. Toute cette période, vous ne pouvez pas imaginer que quatre années avec des yeux bandés, jour et nuit. Nous ne pouvions pas dormir pour la nuit, toujours effrayés, parce qu'il y avait des, toujours des, des, des attentes de, de viol. Ce n'était pas facile. Ce n'était pas facile d'être maltraité, insulté, torturé. Well, you saw that picture of this lady who had been beaten up and, and abused by your forces there. And she says that that wasn't the worst of it, that there was a young man in a nearby cell who was tortured to death simply, she says, for refusing to accept, as she says, the Western Sahara was Moroccan, and for refusing to hail the king. The king is not my king, he said, and he was tortured to death, she says. I mean, that's not peaceful, that's not human rights. I'm not dismissing uh, uh, possible violation of human rights. It happens all over the world. But what it doesn't happen is that these violations are not redressed. Morocco, in 1999, went through scrutinizing 50 years of violation of human rights. We had the Truth Commission that compensated tens of thousands of people, including, including Mrs. Amina Tuhaida. She got $60,000 in terms of compensations, and she got a job also in terms of compensations. So I think 
one has to see the, but you're the, not the denying glass. that there are massive abuses. I'm not, I'm not de denying that they are isolated. I'm not saying that uh, there were no gross violations in, in Morocco, including in the Sahara. Well, that's not what the human rights community says. It's not what the UN says. And right now, the US, especially the Congress, mm -hmm. appears to be getting more and more sensitized to this. And since 2011, the United States has started to link aid to Morocco, military aid, to improvements in the Western Sahara. Now, they haven't been specific, and I'm sure they haven't, mm -hmm. you know, enacted any punitive actions. Do you think they will? Are you worried that eventually you'll lose, that you'll lose U.S. support? Because well, they are your big backers in all of this, in the U.N. and everywhere. Uh, I'm, I, I'm not worried because I know what, what are the achievements of my country for the last 10 years. That Morocco is developing a culture of human rights, that Morocco is making progress, and that we can trust the mechanism, the domestic mechanisms of uh, human rights in Morocco to deal with any violations. Ambassador, it's good of you to have come in. You didn't want to take part in the other documentary, and I'm very glad that you were able to talk to us. And we will keep watching this situation. I'll be always ready to come back and discuss with you. It's Excellent. my pleasure. We will watch and we will continue to report from on the ground.